in the headlines of this hour on VTV News. Top Vietnamese leader holds phone talks with Russian president. And consumer price index is currently under control. In our world news, UK-Egypt issue alerts for Iran-Lebanon airspace. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning, it is 8 a.m. local time in Hanoi and you're watching VTV News. I'm Huyen Chen with the top stories. Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm held phone talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin on August 8. The Russian state leader expressed his belief that Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm will lead the party, state and people of Vietnam to more success in the cause of party building and national construction and development. Party General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm thanked President Putin and other Russian leaders for their letters of condolences and for sending a delegation to attend the state funeral of late Party General Secretary Nguyen Phu Trọng, which reflects the high level of the bilateral relationship as well as the leader's special sentiments towards the late General Secretary and the Vietnamese Party, State and People. Party General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm affirmed that Vietnam remains steadfast in pursuing a foreign policy of independence, self-reliance and multilateralism and diversification of international relations. He reiterated that Vietnam will continue to prioritize strengthening and developing its comprehensive strategic partnership with Russia, adding that the relationship with Russia is among the top priorities in its foreign policy. The two leaders agreed that the cooperation between Vietnam and Russia has achieved significant results in all areas, particularly in defense, security, energy, oil and gas, and trade. They reached a consensus on several major orientations within the bilateral and multilateral cooperation frameworks to further enhance the Vietnam-Russia comprehensive strategic partnership more effectively and practically. Russian President Putin said he looks forward to welcoming General Secretary Tho Lâm to visit Russia in the future. Many foreign party and state leaders have extended their congratulations to State President Tho Lâm after he was elected as General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam on August 3rd. U.S. President Joe Biden sent a congratulatory message to the Vietnamese leader on August 7, saying nearly one year ago, Vietnam and the U.S. launched their comprehensive strategic partnership that marks a new era of strong cooperation between the nations. He also said that Vice President Harris and he look forward to working with Party General Secretary Tho Lâm to continue advancing this historic progress, which supports a strong, independent, prosperous and resilient Vietnam. Congratulating Party General Secretary Tho Lâm, Chairman of the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, and President of Angola, J.L. Dorenko, said that the election demonstrated the CPV Central Committee's high evaluation of Tho Lâm as a state president with wise and effective leadership and wholehearted devotion to the nation's sustainable development and the people's happiness. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the Front for the Liberation of Mozambique, Daniel Francisco Chapo, noted that the CPV Central Committee's confidence in Tho Lâm is a vivid demonstration of his successful completion of previous missions. In their congratulations, the co-president of the Hungarian Socialist Party, the president of the Communist Party of Peru, Red Fatherland, the first secretary of the Socialist Union of Popular Forces Party of Morocco, and the general secretary of the Communist Party of Swaziland, expressed their belief that under the leadership of Party General Secretary Tho Lâm, the CPV will continue to intensifying solidarity, building socialism, and excellently fulfilling the targets and missions identified at the 13th National Party Congress, bringing up prosperity to the Vietnamese people in the new period. Now on Thursday morning, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching, head of the Government Steering Committee for Important International Works and Projects, chaired the committee's 13th meeting. Now, since its 12th meeting, ministries, branches and localities have actively implemented their assigned tasks. 
Notably, our investment policy for numerous projects have been approved, and many issues related to uh, filling materials, construction materials, and site clearance have been resolved. Hanoi has put into operation at the elevated section of the Nhun Hanoi Railway Station Urban Railway. Since the beginning of the term, the country has completed and put into operation 2,021 kilometers of infrastructure, contributing to promoting socio-economic development, creating growth opportunities for localities, enhancing land value, reducing logistic costs, improving goods competitiveness, and generating jobs and livelihoods for the people. Now, during his working visit to Đồng Nai on Thursday morning, National Assembly Chairman Trần Thanh Minh inspected the construction of the Long Thành Airport project. National Assembly Chairman Trần Thanh Minh emphasized the importance and strategic significance of Long Thành International Airport to the socio-economic development of Đồng Nai and the whole country as a whole. The airport is expected to create 200,000 jobs, contributing nearly 1% to Vietnam's GDP by 2030. The National Assembly Chairman commended the units that have completed several bidding packages and are constructing the terminal and runway ahead of schedule. He noted that investors, contractors and workers need to prevent corruption and negativity, effectively ensure labor safety and swiftly complete the project. Minister of Foreign Affairs Bui Thanh Sơn and his Japanese counterpart Kamigawa Yoko co-chaired the 12th meeting of the Vietnam-Japan Cooperation Committee and also held talks on Thursday as part of the Vietnamese minister's official visit to Japan. Now, at the meeting, the Japanese official expressed her deepest, her deepest condolences over the passing of Party General Secretary Nguyễn Phú Trọng and her hope that the two sides will continue the legacy of the late leader to further promote the bilateral friendship and cooperation in all areas. The official agreed to further intensify the economic connection by increasing the Official Development Assistance, or ODA, and promoting investment, trade, and labor cooperation. They agreed to strengthen cooperation in human resources training and addressing population aging, and begin negotiations for a bilateral social insurance agreement. Now, in July, the basic monthly salary was increased, but up to this point, the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, has not increased significantly. According to the General Statistics Office, the CPI in July increased by 0.48% compared to the previous month. The capacity from now until the end of the year is assessed to be quite large, ensuring the target of controlling inflation below 4.5%. The average pork consumption per capita in Vietnam is about 32 kilograms a year. Therefore, pork is an indispensable item in the basket of goods used to calculate the consumer price index. I see the price is still the same, no change. The input price has not changed. In July, the prices of the food group in general remained unchanged, contributing less than 0.1 percentage point to the increase in the consumer price index. The food group, in particular, saw a decrease in prices thanks to stable supply. Current prices are stable due to well-regulated supply. Prices are stable, thus consumption increases. The main factors affecting the consumer price index in July were the increase in domestic petrol prices, increased demand for household electricity, and health insurance premiums adjusted according to the new basic salary. On average, the CPI increased by 4.12% in the first seven months compared to the same period last year. This level is lower than the previously predicted scenario of 4.9%. With an increase of 5% in CPI, we can still control the whole year's inflation below 4.5% as targeted. Such results are thanks to the price management of the government and localities in regulating supply and minimizing the impact of salary increases on commodity price increases. But I think one thing is also because of some basic facts. Um, this is you know, something we, we need to remember. In the second half of this year, then we expect um, that basic facts um, uh, to gradually dissipate. At the recent regular government meeting in July, the Prime Minister reiterated the requirement to closely monitor and synchronously implement solutions to control inflation, ensure market stability, and prices of essential goods.
All these measures are designed to achieve more comprehensive and inclusive socioeconomic development results in 2024. For manufacturers, especially those that have to import raw materials, there are many fees to be paid. In addition to import taxes, transportation fees and warehouse fees, a significant expense is the cost of exchange rate fluctuations. Many manufacturers lose up to uh, 150,000 US dollars each month due to exchange rate fluctuations. The cooling of the exchange rate has come as a good news, helping them to increase competitiveness, thereby fighting more new orders. This mold and component manufacturing enterprise currently supplies about 600 products to domestic and foreign automobile and motorbike manufacturers. Imports must be paid in foreign currency. Cost of purchasing raw materials is roughly more than 318,000 USD monthly. Raw material costs account for 60 to 70 percent of the product value. If the exchange rate can be lowered just a little bit, our company can save thousands of USD. It would increase our competitiveness. For enterprises with foreign direct investment FDI, in the first seven months of this year, realized FDI capital reached about 12.55 billion USD, up 8.4 percent over the same period last year. This was the highest rate in the past five years. The cooling and stable exchange rate is expected to help attract more foreign investment capital. If we can take advantage of the fluctuations on the global exchange rate arena, we can stabilize the domestic exchange rate, boosting capital flow into Vietnam. Vietnam is still maintaining a positive balance of payments, with foreign exchange reserves expected to reach 110 billion USD in 2024, which are the foundations for stabilizing the exchange rate until the end of the year. Coming up next on VTV News. Deputy Prime Minister wants renewed efforts to prevent trade fraud, smuggling and counterfeit goods. And Hazan Province applies digital transformation in promoting OCOP products. Welcome back to VTV News. Deputy Prime Minister Chen Lu Guang on Thursday urged ministries, sectors and localities to enhance the use of digital technology to promptly detect and address smuggling, trade fraud and counterfeit goods in the context of the rapid development of e-commerce. Addressing a national teleconference summing up the work in the first six half of the 2024 and putting forward tasks for the second, the head of the National Steering Committee for Combating a Smuggling emphasized the need to perfect legal regulations related to a smuggling, trade fraud and counterfeit goods work. He said the focus should be placed on a renew reviewing inadequate regulations and sending them to the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and the Ministry of Finance for management in accordance with their authority. He also urged more drastic and a better coordination between relevant forces and enhance inspection and supervision to promptly detect legal loopholes and errors. Now, according to the National Center for Hydrometeorological, this year's rainy season will come earlier and the rainfall is likely to be greater than in previous years. This is a disadvantage for many key transport projects as the roadbed construction is still in progress. Before this year's rainy season, the North-South Expressway project by Vod Hamgi section will complete the construction of 20 kilometers of the roadbed out of the total of 35 kilometers of the entire project. The Hamgi Vung Ang section will basically complete the roadbed progress. Currently, many bidding packages are planned to be open for bidding on December 31st this year. And on April 30th next year, the sections of the North-South Expressway Project Phase 2, passing through central provinces of Hà Tĩnh, Quảng Bình, Quảng Trị and Phú Yên, will also be put into operation simultaneously.
Green consumption is emerging as a global trend. Eco-friendly products are increasingly visible on shelves across Europe and many other countries. As consumers around the world become more interested in green products, Vietnamese businesses must adapt to a new export requirements. This is especially crucial for agricultural products, which Vietnam exports to more than 170 countries and territories. Keeping up with the green consumption trend, the project to develop 1 million hectares of high-quality, low-emission rice linked with green growth in the Mekong Delta region by 2030 is considered a pioneering model. It's also expected to revolutionize the rice industry and its ability to create rice products that are not only high quality, but also environmentally responsible. Vietnam is also the first country to implement large-scale emission reduction measures in rice production. The world buys products as well as the way they are made. Do they cause climate change or environmental pollution? What about their social impact? This is an irreversible trend. It will compel the whole world to change the ways of production, and there's no turning back. The project to develop 1 million hectares of high-quality, low-emission rice is also considered a solution for rice-growing areas across the country in the context of unpredictable climate change. Green aquaculture is another inevitable trend. The aquaculture industry is committed to paying more attention to new requirements such as emission reduction, fair trade and environmental protection and is preparing to face more challenges from now on. The new requirements require us to fulfill our responsibility to protect the environment and society and practice green aquaculture so that we have enough information to move forward in case an inspection occurs. We must ensure that Vietnamese seafood products can be labeled green for both domestic and international markets. With today's intensive and super-intensive farming practices, emissions from aquaculture pose significant problems. In the future, import markets may introduce more product labels for aquatic animal welfare. Along with food safety, these will present new challenges for the aquaculture industry. Vietnamese agriculture and aquaculture must proactively address these future challenges. The application of digital technology and the development of e-commerce have brought many OCOP products closer to consumers and even allowed for export to international markets. Hazang province has actively promoted and guided local farmers in digital transformation, contributing to the successful implementation of the province's comprehensive digital transformation program and creating a foundation for sustainable digital agricultural development for highland ethnic communities. Thanks to the application of digital technologies and the development of an intelligent agricultural model, Phin Ho tea has become a standout Oka product. Among these, the green and black teas under the Phin Ho brand have been certified as five-star national Oka products. However, the biggest breakthrough for the Phin Ho cooperative came when they began selling on e-commerce platforms and social media channels. Currently, e-commerce sales account for about 60% of our revenue. It is much more convenient than traditional sales methods. I don't have to find locations or fairs to promote products anymore. The Palmi Cooperative is also one of the pioneers in digital transformation in Hazang province. Oka products from the cooperative, such as mint honey, medicinal herbs, and specialty agricultural products from Hazang, have appeared on various domestic e-commerce platforms. Last year, the cooperative's revenue increased by about 80% com compared to traditional sales channels. We apply QR codes on each product so that customers can trace the origin of the product, its content, and how to use it. They can acquire more information about our products and the cooperative. Hazang is a mountainous province with nearly 90% of the population being ethnic people. Therefore, authorities at all levels in Hazang province have participated and accompanied local people in expanding sales channels in digital platforms. We have participated in training courses on product traceability and how to build communication for a product. Local communication channels have also supported us in promoting products. Thanks to them, many customers have come to us. This is a quick and effective solution to connect with the market. 
Hazang's good products have been promptly spread to consumers as well as domestic and foreign tourists. The local people have more jobs and are willing to promote the transformation of production models. Hazang province has 157 products certified with all cop stars and more than 117,000 agricultural production households have accounts on e-commerce platforms. This is also the premise for Hazang to continue its efforts to apply digital transformation in agricultural production and bring all cop products to domestic and international markets. Hanan province has recently titled as Asia's leading emerging tourist destination and Asia's leading local cultural destination at the 31st World Travel Awards for Asia and Oceania. Last year, Hanan was honored as the world's leading local cultural destination. Therefore, the province is working with investors, the tourism community and local people to further enhance the destination brand. Damchuk Pagoda is an attractive destination for visitors to Hanam thanks to its stunning natural landscape and many unique, massive spiritual structures. The atmosphere here is very solemn with unique architecture. This makes me feel very comfortable when coming to this place. What an attractive place to visit. Possessing many famous destinations such as Damchuk Badang Pagoda, Chen Thung Temple, craft villages and a rich cuisine, Last year, Hanam Nam welcomed more than 4.3 million visitors. The most attractive point when coming to Hanam Nam is the unique spiritual cultural beauty. The cuisine is also extremely rich and wonderful. Hanam Nam has completed its transport infrastructure, attracted investment in industry, tourism and services with more than 1,200 projects. In the Bakcho Zhang area, Huli City, has just started the urban area project of nearly 420 hectares, of which up to 200 hectares are dedicated to green space, water surface, sun world park and cultural, ecological, sports, festival parks and modern hotel complexes. I believe that in just a short time, the appearance of Hanam will completely change. We will have synchronous urban planning for a city with full facilities. We expect to welcome more than 10 million tourists by 2030. With many international awards and the support of strategic investors, Hanam has gradually become most visited destination of the region. Coming up next in our world news. UK Egypt issue alerts for Iran Lebanon airspace. And Telegram accused of promoting riots in the UK. Now moving on to our world news. The UK and Egypt asked their respective airlines on Wednesday to avoid Iranian and Lebanese airspace amid a growing fears of a possible broader conflict in the region. A notice sent to pilots said all Egyptian airlines must avoid flying over Iranian territory during the time of the Iranian military exercise. Britain issued a similar warning later. Many airlines globally are revising their schedule to avoid Iranian and Lebanese airspace while also calling off flights to Israel and Lebanon amid growing fears of a possible broader conflict in the region. After the killing of senior members of the Islamist movement Hamas and Hezbollah. Telegram is being accused of playing a role in fueling the riots in the UK after several far-right groups used the app to exchange information to organize and incite protests. British authorities and police believe the riots that began in a coastal town in northwest England and then sparked a wave of violence across the UK were promoted and organized through online platforms, including Telegram, TikTok and X. The UK government is considering countermeasures to prevent the rise of extremist activity on these platforms. The International Counterterrorism Technology Organization also issued an urgent warning on Wednesday about Telegram being used by right-wing extremists to organize riots in the UK. A strong earthquake shook southwestern Japan on Thursday, triggering a tsunami warning. The Japan Meteorological Agency said the quake had a magnitude of 7.1 near Miyazaki Prefecture. 
The agency issued a tsunami warning of up to one meter for the western islands of Kyushu and Shikoku, but it was later lifted. Shinkansen bullet train service in Kyushu resumed hours after the quake. No abnormalities were detected at the Sendai and Ikata nuclear power plants near the quake site. The Japanese government has set up a task force to deal with the quake, and there is no information yet on the extent of damage caused by the quake. South Korea lies in the temperate zone and has four distinct seasons, but its climate appears to be getting warmer and wetter throughout the year due to climate change. A farmer in Seoul has surprised everyone by growing tropical bananas. More in the following story. 73-year-old Ma is among a growing number of farmers adapting to the change in climate. He had low expectations when he planted the crop of subtropical bananas in his community farm. But warmer temperatures have produced a welcome surprise. At first I was curious about whether it would really bear bananas. So it was really nice to see the fruits on the tree after we grew them. Over the past few years, the country's cultivated area of subtropical crops has jumped more than tenfold. That's according to the Rural Development Administration. Kim Kwang Su is a professor of agriculture and life sciences at the Seoul National University. He says South Korea's climate conditions are becoming similar to subtropical regions. Since climate change is coming, we should develop varieties of crops that fit well with these environments with new temperatures. It's very important to predict when new crops should be made and where they can be grown. And it can be an important way to overcome the climate crisis. Since 2012, South Korea's average annual temperature has shown a continuous warming trend. Rainfall during last year's monsoon season was 26 inches nationwide, nearly double the average annual figure. Now let's move on to the weather forecast. That's all the news we have for this hour. To rewatch our program, you can download our mobile app VTV Go or check out our YouTube channel VTV for Go. Thank you for watching and see you next time.